What's going on, guys? We're going to refactor this silly little piece of code to teach the next logical step in learning Ruby and just learning the basics of programming. And that is, uh, to continue with control flow, we've got ifs, so basically comparisons and control flow. Uh, but there's another thing we can do, which is looping and iteration. And that's what we'll cover now. So we're going to refactor this to take advantage of looping and iteration. Don't worry if those things sound scary. Although looping sounds kind of fun. Okay, we're going to turn these, you can see we're repeating code here. This is, if you ever see this, it's a, it's a warning sign, like I said in the last video. And when you're seeing code that's structurally similar, being repeated over and over, you know you can refine this and it's called refactor it into something that's more efficient, so less lines of code that does the same thing and potentially is more flexible. Okay, so what we're going to do is, so Timmy and Tommy are basically, like, these things are almost the same thing, they just have a different name. And we can, we can keep that name without needing both of these chunks of code. So what we'll do, I think, first is we'll keep this for reference and we'll create a new file. And we'll say, this is looking like a hash to me, right? So names, we'll call it a hash. And so our first name would be We'll make it a string. Timmy is 10 and Tommy is 15. So we can get rid of these already. So now we would access this by saying names Timmy, right? We would say names Timmy. And that would give us 10, the age of this person. Uh, these things we can leave, whatever, they're basically constants. Um, this is the same as this, basically. So what we really want to do, write this new. And the way we do that is there's two kinds of loops, one of which I'll show you. Uh, we're not really going to uh, worry too much about it. Quit is false. So we're saying we don't want to quit. While quit oops, does not equal true do puts this is annoying. Let me see. And we'll save this to infinite loop. So what's going to happen here is we're looping with the while keyword. So while some condition do some block of code. In this case, it's just a simple print statement. So what's going to happen is it's going to run like this. Quit is false. Okay. While quit does not equal true, does quit not equal true? Yeah, it's false, so it does not equal true. Okay, then we do this thing. Great, end. Oh, it's a while loop, so we go to the beginning. Bang. Does quit not equal true? Yup, still doesn't equal true. We'll do it again, over and over and over again. This loop will not terminate, not on its own. Let's try running it. We'll go to code and Ruby infinite loop. Boom, there it goes. Thousands and thousands, you can see it, just that couple of seconds. My bash history doesn't have enough, uh, sorry, my terminal history doesn't have enough lines for it. Okay, so this is like something you probably want to avoid, unless you're just trying to heat your house using your CPU. So inside of this, you would have to do something that changes the condition so that at some point this will stop executing, right? So what could we do? Um, well, we, if we wanted this to terminate almost immediately, we could just say quit equals true. Oops. I'm using the trial version because I'm a bad person. We'll run it again, and it only runs once. It runs once, sets the variable to true, and then this evaluates to false. Right? So while quit does not equal true, does quit equal true? Yep, because we just ran it once. Went through. Uh, now this is no longer true, and the do doesn't have an effect. It just says we're not doing that because this condition is not met. Okay, so let's make this a tiny bit more realistic, and we'll say, um, instead of quit, we'll call it i, an iterator. It's not an iterator, but we'll, we'll call it zero, because we're like that. We zero index things. So, first of all, we need to change all this, because it's not going to know what quit means. So while i, let's just say, is less than 
And what's our limit? I could just say uh, annoyingness. And this is how many times the print will print. We'll say 10. Instead of checking for true, we're just going to set uh, this to annoyingness, whatever the level of this has been set to. And then we're going to say this is annoying. And then we're going to increment i. So i, how do you add 1 to i? Well, you might say i plus 1, but that's actually not going to change i. That's just going to give us a value that's i with 1 added to it, and i will still be the same. So that's not good. So we could say i equals i plus 1, right? So we're reassigning the value that i points to to be whatever it was just a second ago plus 1. And as soon as we say that, i has changed. So basically saying the new i oops, is the old i plus 1. Easy enough. But there's a nicer way of writing that, and that is the plus equals operator. So that is i is itself plus something. So itself plus whatever's over here. So this just means increment i by 1. You could also just say increment i, but we're just going to stick with i plus equals 1. We're incrementing i by 1. Now if we run this again, Ruby infinite loop, this should have printed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. Did I say this was going to print 11 times? Okay, now it's going to print 11 times. <laughs> Mark my words! Okay, there we go. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. The reason is, this is why people have off by one errors, because human brains are a little bit weird when it comes to this. At least mine is. Uh, and I found enough off by one errors in code to know that other people's are too. So, if it's just checking less, then it will not fire when 10 is hit. If it's ch checking for less than or equal to, then it will fire one more time when it hits 10. Otherwise, it would actually be... So without this, it would actually be like saying this. But you don't need to worry too much about that. Okay, so those are while loops. We're going to go... Uh, there's another thing called a for loop, which we're going to use to refactor our little piece of code. So for loop, basically, there's a nice... What I like about... Uh, Python is that the canonical way of doing a for loop is you have, uh, you know, some collection is, you know, one, two, three. And then you just say for item in collection. And then you do some stuff for that. And you say, uh, you know, item, you know, you could say print item, right? Um, the canonical way in, in Ruby to do this is with, with an each construct. So you would actually say, uh, I'll show you this. A for loop would basically be some collection is this collection. We'll make all these into strings. And then you would say collection each, and the do keyword for block of code. And then the thing we're going to name those collections, uh, each item in those, so we'll say item, each do item, and we'll just say, oops, puts item. Now this is actually equivalent to, uh, we'll keep the collection the same, so this will be our sort of constant, for item in collection, yeah, so this is basically the the way that I like to write it and the way that you'll see it in Python, and this is the canonical Ruby way to write it with an each. So these, these things are equivalent. Uh, just let's run them to be sure. So we could, and then we'll... Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Same output. This is the first loop here, and that's the second loop, identical. So this is what you'll, more like what you see in Bash. Four, so you have this collection here, and then what you're doing is for each one of those, put that item to the screen. So the item changes. So the first time through this loop, it's really saying collection 0, so that's 1. So item is equal to 1, and then we say puts 1. And then the second time through, we say the item is reassigned to the second member of that collection. We put that thing. And then item is reassigned again to be 3. And then we put three. 
That's the form I want you to remember for doing Bash. In Ruby, should you decide to go crazy with Ruby, people will look at you kind of funny when you do this. Um, this is how the Ruby community likes to write loops that iterate over something. So you take the item that you're going to iterate over, you see it here, same thing, and then each do, so for each of those things, do this thing while assigning this name between the pipe character to the item on each iteration. I think this is more readable because it's more how a human brain thinks about iterating over something. But I, I just want to make sure you see both of these forms. Okay, so back to our version here. If we've got, and this is nice to keep a uh, REPL open, a read eval print loop, so a Ruby shell basically. If you've got these names here, this is a hash, right? So if we say for item in the hash, uh, we'll just say puts i, right? Let's see what this is. This prints Timmy, and then 10, and then Tommy, and then 15. We actually don't want all those items. We just want the names while we go through our little loop. So what we're actually going to say is um, hash, oh, sorry, so the hash keys. And that gives us a list of just the keys. So that's what we want. Get it? Names dot keys. Okay. So what we're going to say is for name, we'll just we'll say name in names keys. And what are we doing here? If name is less than this variable, if the name is less than the age where Deus Ex becomes awesome, which in my opinion is at birth, but hey, then we say uh, you can play, but it's a little bit weird, right? Because it's not just Tim anymore. So what do we say? If you remember string interpolation, name can play Deus Ex. So now this will be the same as whatever name is currently assigned as this goes through the loop. And we can basically just keep the rest of this loop the way it is. There we go. We'll just change this to name and else we'll take this. And what do we do here? String interpolation again. Name cannot under any circumstance play Deus Ex. Now remember the for loop needs an end too. So that's the loop. For each name in names keys, which evaluates to this list, so we're iterating over this list here, which is the list of keys in here. If they're under that, or equal to it, remember, we'll say we can play it. Otherwise, if they're exactly the magic age, we become astounded. Otherwise, uh, we give the error message. So basically, we can just delete this. And we'll call it control flow loops. B. Okay. And we'll get out of here with a control D. Now, there's one bug that I see in here. We're not done yet. Sorry, just noticed. Uh, if we say this name is set to a string and we're comparing it to an age, this doesn't make any sense. So actually what we want is names, name, right? So we'll, we're saying names, whatever name we have currently, gives us the age. My bad. So we're actually accessing this every time. So if name's name. So if this thing here, the age, is less uh, greater than or equal to where it becomes awesome, we can do that. Otherwise, it's magic. And if nothing else matches, say nope. Let's try CD code. And if save this as control flow loops. All right. I guess we can uh, make this a little bit more expressive, right? Name. Okay, try running it again. Timmy, holy crap, magic. And Tommy can play. I hope that this horrifically contrived example taught you the basics. The only important thing, really, is we can use iteration to improve the amount of code we write. 
So to make that much less, we can sort of accessing values, uh, keys and values in a hash, comparing things, looping through something. Uh, likewise, probably in Ruby you'd be doing this kind of loop, but we chose this kind of loop. While and for loops, so infinite looping, how to break out of infinite looping, etc. And there you have it. So that's really all you need to understand for your very basic programming control flow. How to compare stuff with if, how to compare values, how to then make choices based on that, how to loop over collections of things and use those to make decisions. And in the next video will be the last Ruby video, uh, and that will be about functions. So sorry for the length of the video. I just wanted to kind of blast through the rest of this Ruby stuff so we can get to the bash. See you in the next video.